all know me, my name is Amar, and I'll be teaching this half of the class regarding Google marketing I since we are <laughs> working on all of the marketing aspects of the business as like I have quite a bit of experience with this because being an entrepreneur, in entrepreneurs allowed me to gain a lot of knowledge by researching and stuff like that. And I would like to share that with all of you. So let's dive into it. No more introductions. Okay, first of all, has is anybody familiar with the uh, search engine optimizations and Google marketing? And anybody has done it? Nobody? No. Wow. Okay. So first, uh, the thing is, you have a really good idea. You have a product, you have a service, or anything. It doesn't matter if you can't get it to the public. Like your service and everything is just a waste if you can't get it to the public, in the eyes of the public. If you cannot solve their problem, there's like there's no point in having that product or having that business out there in the open world. And the main thing, the main aspect we do that is through marketing and search engine optimization. Both of them goes hand in hand because they both involve keywords, researching your audience, demographics, and everything we learned about in the previous slides on how to get your product out. First of all, we'll talk about a little bit about search engine optimization, the SEO, as we say it. SEO means like getting your site ranked up on Google. Not just only Google, like you can do SEOs to get your site ranked up on Bing and other search engines, but Google is the main target because 80% of the Canadians use Google, but if you're in the United States, you should also consider Bing because around 35, 40% of the people do you utilize Bing for their searches in the United States as compared to Google? Yep. Yeah, Canadians use Google a lot, but not US people. They also use Bing a lot more. So on your business plan, say you have a plan, you created your website, and you have a website with a home page, with a collections page or category page, and with a product page. So you have three pages. One is your home. The other is your collection or category. Sorry, uh, category. And the third one is your product. So these can be multiple. These can also be multiple. And this is going to be only one. You're not going to have two or three home pages of your website. It's going to have one. Now, the thing is, what people do is they make a lot of times they make the mistake. And I also did the same. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past and learn from it. They put a lot of things on their home pages. Don't do that. Don't put your entire site structure, every single thing, just on a single page. Reasons is, the reasons are, your site will be slow, first of all, because no user wants to spend more than two seconds for the site to load. And that's honest. Like two seconds, I'm saying even two seconds are a lot. People want everything instant. They don't. and the thing, the how it's gonna be instant that you optimize your homepage. Make it like uh, simple enough that you project your idea to the general public, but do not post a lot of things on there that just keeps loading the scripts and everything and the images and all the things at the back. And uh, second thing, do not optimize homepage at first because homepage is something that's just giving a user the idea. What the people want to see are your service products or your categories. They don't want to see your homepage. They don't care like what your homepage looks like. They care what your product looks like and what your category or collection page is gonna look like. And so if you ever do a search on Google, and uh, let's say you're not talking about paid marketing right now. So if you ever do a search on Google, you will see that a lot of, on first pages, a lot of the sites are blocks. You will notice that there are blocks. Have you ever noticed that? That why there are, like, if you search something for a product or something, why does a blog appear? Well, we'll do it. So let's say I'll search, like, uh, uh, I'll do, I'm interested in technology, so I'll do gaming PC. So you have people coming up and questions and all of that. So these are all like talking about what's happening. category that drop so why is that like why is everything appearing right now over here 
The reason is if you click any one of their links, um, let's go to Walmart. You'll see they have a lot of content on their category pages as compared to their home pages. These keywords, like these titles, whatever it is, they represent your ranking in Google. They represent what you have to offer to Google. And so one of the things which I found while I was doing it is like Walmart is obviously gonna be ranked first because it's a really big company on itself. They pay Google for marketing and stuff like that. But if you look at on the right side, I have a pretty good tool. It's called Keywords Everywhere. So it's called Keywords Everywhere. What it does is it tells me similar keywords, like as you can see, like similar keywords, what is the volume, how much are they paying, and what's the competition, and you'll see a lot of things. This is a really good tool. I would definitely suggest you to add it on your, it's an add-on for Google Chrome and Firefox. It's called Keywords Everywhere. So you just need to install it. Keywords Everywhere, so you just need to install it and get things going. So now, <coughs> one of the best thing about it is, like I just searched one term, like let's say gaming PC. It gave me a lot of things related to it. What people are searching right now. That's what you need, that's the data you need for your marketing stuff and everything. That's what you need to put on your site. Like, not everything, but the things which are necessary for your site. You don't wanna put like Walmart and stuff like that on your site because that's not a part of your business. But basically, uh, you will see that what you need to put by using this tool, you will get a little bit of know-how, like what are the keywords and everything you might be using. So this is one of a great tool. Second thing is about uh, what I want to say how to categorize your page. So let's do some, okay, so this is my site. And as you can see, it's uh, it's based on Shopify, first of all, because I don't have time to develop a complete <laughs> site. <laughs> and uh, because I need to get business access and everything running. So it's based on Shopify. See the simplicity as soon as a customer comes in or uh, any person comes in, he knows what it's offering. It's just gonna dive into categories. And if you go down, there's like uh, featured products and stuff like that. But not a lot of the things are on the home page. This helps my site to load faster and has like a lot of like able to figure out what you want to do because usually the user comes up and lands it into the gaming computer category most of the time. Here's the fun end. All of these products have, I have researched keywords. All of these products contains keywords which are being searched all over the place right now. So you have uh, the processor, the RAM, the graphics card, every single thing that's being searched on right now in the market on Google over here. And it's gonna be over here, and this helps in ranking your site up. By ranking the site up, you'll be able to market the site really good. If the, the ranking is like really, really bad, marketing is not gonna be that much more easier because you're paying for marketing. For ranking, you're not paying. for ranking and for organic searches, you're not paying. So that's a key aspect to take from this. Second thing is if you scroll down, you see I don't have any content on my, uh, like on my category pages. Like I'm not saying a lot of things on, I'm just giving them the important information about the product itself. I'm not saying what's there and what it has and everything. But if I scroll down, you see I have a lot of content at the bottom. <clears throat> One of the reasons having the content at the bottom is how Google bots work in marketing plus search engine optimization. Google bots like content. They don't like a lot of images or stuff like that. They want to know what content you have on your site and make sure that whenever you're writing a content or anything like that, you utilize the keywords. Keywords are the main thing. Uh, even in marketing and search engine optimization, Everything is based on keywords. And later on in Facebook and Instagram, that's a completely different story because those are social uh, sites, not uh, <coughs> search engine sites. So there's a difference between social marketing and search engine marketing. So don't mix them up, like they're completely different things. So you, uh, like, I draw, like I wrote, I analyze my competitors. Main thing is to analyze your competitors, what they have to offer. Because a company like Walmart, Best Buy, 
or like MUEG, they had been around for 20 or even more of years. So they know what's best is. So you analyze what their content is. If you analyze that, you'll be able to figure out, okay, so this is what they're saying, and this is how they're getting their search up. I need to come up with something similar. Do not copy them, otherwise you're gonna go into the copyright laws and stuff like that. That's, please do not just copy paste them. Have something similar. Like, all of this content has similarity with Walmart, has similarity with Staples, has similarity with other big competitors in the States, because uh, like I also work for the States as well. I have quite a few customers in the States. So, over there. So you just have to make sure that you're not copywriting any of this stuff. And yeah, so one of the reasons, and if you like about and all of that stuff is, you find out how you're gonna, because every single key, because the main keywords were already in my product page. I utilize the keywords which are not in my product page, I put it in my <coughs> content. And it's easier for the user to ignore this. If you put it just on top, if you come in onto my site and you see just content, content, not my products and not what I'm offering, you'll get irritated and leave right away. Leave right away, you won't even bother spending, like nobody likes to spend like more than two, two seconds if they're not interested on a site. You just leave right away. So if you put content on it, you're just telling them to please go away from my site. So just put it at the bottom. Because at the bottom, when people will scroll down, they'll go for pagination, oh, two, three, four, they won't even bother reading it down there. But by having the content down, they're utilizing the power of Google, the power of the Google box to get your site up. So this is, I would say, category and collection page uh, search engine optimization. So you should, you must have content. Always have content on your page, but at the bottom. Somewhere where it's not distracted, but like somewhere where the user is not distracted. Make sure of that. Don't have it on the user's face. It gets irritating. Second thing about it is, uh, like I demoed you keywords everywhere and all of that stuff. So what I'll do is, I'll show you one more thing. That is, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, just gonna, sorry, I'm just gonna move this to the side. And so you can, okay. So, the other thing I want to show is answer the public. Answer the public. A lot of people do searches based on questions nowadays. A lot of people do searches based on questions. Not on, this is just a guy, like an old guy who's coming up to your site. Let's say you have a health plan or something like that. You might, like an old guy will come up. He's not gonna search for the exact key term. He's gonna ask for what, how to get a health plan? That's a question. It's not an exact key term, but that's a question. So let's just say we say health plan and enter. Let's see what do we get. Where's the word language? Okay, let's see what do we get. So you don't need to enter question. You just need to enter the keyword. What do you want to search for? See, 92 questions are there in health plan. People are asking. When, will, can, which, where, how, who, what, and why. These are all the questions out there which people are asking every day. And you see the ones which are like greener, like dark green, or like, uh, yeah, more brighter. They're the ones which are people are as interested in the most to get. So you use these questions on your category page or on your site and utilize them. Let's say if I, I can pick up any of this question like uh, how's health plan? You'll see how many things are there. You'll see uh, <coughs> keywords everywhere showing the volume is approximately 2,000. 2,000 people on daily basis. And you see the cost per click budget, like one click cost 2.50 US dollar. That's a lot, that's a lot. So one visitor on your side of a health plan will cost you through Google marketing, if you were to do paid marketing on AdWords, 2.50 US dollar. That's, that's not cheap. If you multiply it by 100 visitors, you can see where it's gonna get. And judging by this, you can analyze how much people, companies pay on marketing. If one click is gonna cost 2.50 dollars and thousands of companies are paying for that, like paying this much amount of money, 
can analyze how much Google is making through just market, like their AdWords platform. It's a really good thing. But yeah, here I wanted to show you that you can utilize this without even paying by just entering that question onto your site, on, on your product page. What was that tool set that you had there? Like uh, on the online one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a website actually called answerthepublic.com. Oh, I see. Answer the public. Yeah, that's a website called Answer the Public. So you will be able to utilize a lot of these questions and get things because when you have questions on your site, your site will be ranked up more. Not all, not everybody and not a lot of people utilize questions. Not a lot. And a lot of services and products, they don't utilize questions, but questions have become more and more popular nowadays. I think about what we saw right now, $2.50, not a small thing to worry about. So that's how much it has become. So you can include like, uh, you're going to include the keywords, but focus on questions as well. Just do not only focus on having a keyword or anything like that. Focus on questions as well. Maybe a lot of, you can attract a lot of customers. And with this, with this stuff, you can have a lot of traffic even without uh, like, uh, even without paying a lot much for the Google marketing. So that's why I'm like explaining this first, except for just directly diving into the Google AdWords. But that is somewhere where you create ads, have budgets and all of that stuff, that's something else. Okay, so we had these two things. I'm gonna pull up my notes. I had a lot a lot of more plans for it. So I was, I was if this was like I was doing, oh yeah, one more thing I wanna tell you, Google Answer Bot. Does anybody know what Google Answer Bot is? What is Google Answer Box? Box. Yeah, Google Answer Box. What is Google Answer Box? Let's Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking you to search on it on your laptop. What is Google Answer Box? Hey Siri. <laughs> hey Siri. Come on, guys. It's not Apple. So it's a I'm asking what is Google Answer it's a, Box? It's a unique. S-E-R-P-S-L, well, that is powered no, by the no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, simple, I'll put it. This is the answer box. The search engine is the answer box. You type one keyword, you'll get a quite a bunch right away. Oh, so the search engine. That's the, that's the answer box. Health plan, a lot of how, how, how people are searching, like health plan, health planner, health planner. You can actually include these words on your website. You can see that, uh, yeah, these values that are appearing right uh, on the right side of all of that, that's because I have keywords everywhere installed. So you make sure if you want these values to appear, you have to make sure that you install keywords is everywhere. A, is, it, is keywords a free, free thing? It's free, it's free. You gotta go Everything in this keywords. class, I'll be te like letting you know, teaching and stuff like that, everything's gonna be free and publicly available. No paid tools or anything like that. There are paid tools which I utilize, but those are gonna cost a lot, so don't, uh, like, don't utilize them at all, yeah. So, yeah, so this answer box also reveals a lot of information about the keywords being searched today, nowadays, and how, what's the volume and everything, so you can utilize this as well. So that's pretty much it. This also falls into the products. On products as well, you have to make sure that you have like a lot of descriptions of how the things work and everything, and, uh, like and on your product description and your product specification, make sure that you do market research first of the keywords. You can utilize Google Answer Box for that. You can utilize keywords everywhere for that. You can utilize Answer the Public if you want questions regarding those keywords. Just type any keyword, like we just saw a demo, we typed in any of the keywords, and you got a bunch of questions coming up and uh, what the people are asking. And see, there are a lot, there are a lot of things that can be done. And it also shows you what type of searches, like according to alphabetics, like what's happening with it. So it's, it's a lot of things that can be said about, about this one. So you just have to be like uh, careful on what you are targeting and what your plan is and you have to like make sure that you utilize all of this stuff. And now, so we got uh, into product and let me pull up my notes and, oh yes. Now here's the thing, product page optimization. One of the main things you have to worry about is optimizing your product page as well because a lot of people just want to directly land on your product. They don't even want to land on your category or collection page, but 
optimizing both category, collection page, ranks your home page and site up. That's, that's the key. You don't optimize your home page. You optimize your product and collection page. You got your home page automatically ranked up by Google. Simple. Don't, don't work on this. This is nothing. Work on this and this. This is everything for your site. So product for product optimization, there's a site A, Hrefs. I'm not gonna be going through this. This is a paid tool, costs 200 US dollars per month for a good package on this one. So we already went through Answer the Public. We already went through Google Answer Box. Product URL. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of spelling mistakes with that. I don't pay mind to my spellings when I'm doing all of this work, so just bear with me. URL of a product. Make sure your product URL is not really, 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 really long that people tend to just forget about it or stuff like that. Make it short, make it simple, but uh, if it's long, it's fine. Google will be able to pick it up, take care of it, but don't make it too long that it exceeds like people's expectations of, hey, what's because too long URLs can also have a suspicion in people's mind that it might be a spam or something. So just be careful of that. And how like uh, that's title? when you're developing your website. I'll show you how Shopify works. When I'll, after Google AdWords, I'll show you how Shopify works and how Shopify URL works and how you can uh, add in those URLs. But every CMS, every content management system, whether you're uh, like uh, using Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, WordPress, they all have tools to do that. Or if you're developing your own, you can set that up yourself as well. Usually what they do is they take the product title as the Shopify URL, as the URL. Don't do that, Don't because your product <coughs> title can be long. Mm -hmm. So if your product title is long, your URL is gonna be long, it's not gonna be short. So make sure you take, in the, like, take into account for that. Second, uh, okay, so I've spoken a lot. Anybody have a question? Yep? So what is optimization of the product and the collection category? What do you mean by that? Like uh, where? Optimize the product and the collection page rather than home page? Yeah. What okay, by that what I mean is, uh, I'll show you an example right now. So, this is a collection page. Collection page means that your all of your products are grouped together in just one page with a small title displaying what the product is. Doesn't go into details or anything like that. It just gives an overview of every single product you have. And the people who see that will be able to like, you know, pick up what product they need. And they'll be able to use that according to that. Now, product pages, when they click on it, it's gonna change. So they clicked on it, as you can see, it changed completely. This is called a product page. Product page means individual product, not grouped together product. Individual thing you're targeting. That's a product. Categories optimize, like you can have like a five, 10, categories at max, like if you're a startup business, like five is more than enough. Products, you can have more than 200. You can have even thousands of products. So you have to worry about products as well and when you're optimizing. And believe me that I did not do SEO or anything like that at first. Now I'm doing it and I'm optimizing more than 250 products. And I know how hard it is on each and individual product. So whenever you have a business plan and you're just trying to execute it because you need to launch your presence on the web, Make sure that you follow what is going on over here so when you launch your product, you don't face a lot of problems as compared to what, what's going on. So by optimizing, I mean like what we were going through, like the content, the questions, and the keywords, putting into both the products and the collection page. Both of them over there. Okay. So how are you gonna incorporate this question into the product page? Is it like creating an FAQ? Yeah, see, FAQ. FAQ simple, just simple create an FAQ. Simple as that because uh, the content is there. Google bot doesn't care like where is specification, description, reasons to consider. Google bot only cares that if you have text content in there. It's all about text content. It's not about images or anything. It's all about the text content what you have. That's what Google bots do. And you have to be good in the eyes of Google <laughs> if you wanna have like success in your business in terms of e-commerce. So yeah, any more questions? <coughs> okay, so we'll continue. Now, 
The fourth thing is optimizing your H tags. H tags, like if you're a developer or a business person, like even a business person would know, H tags mean heading tags. Like how heading tags are, like you have uh, H1, 2, 3, up till 6. Google looks a lot for this H1 tag. This should be your first priority to optimize. Your H1 is the title which defines every single thing on the search. A title that will define your existence on Google. Simply put, it's gonna define how you're gonna be ranked, it's gonna define what you're gonna have and what, what Google will see as who you are. So, has to be highly optimized, high priority. H1, and if you don't have an H1 tag, then H2, these two. Highly, highly recommended to optimize using excellent keywords on these two. Work on that. Don't uh, like, don't just ignore. Your title, most of the time, are H1 and H2 headings. They are not H3 or H4. So you can set them up. I'm not saying you cannot do that, but if you're following a CMS or any other like, um, because when you dive into business, you don't develop your know, site yourself because either you can focus on the business aspect or either you can focus on the development as aspect of your business. So don't, you cannot do all both of them together. Even if you're, if you're using something like, like a Shopify, big commerce or Magento and all of that, make sure that you keep an eye on your H1 and H2 tags. And can These. you give an example of your site, what is your Okay, I will show you right now. So how you just go to view page source and type in H1. So you see H1 is this. The tag itself, see, the content, the H1, the content, you have like the processor model, the graphics card model, these are the main keywords people search. So I have the main keywords on my title, as well as my H1 tag. Both of them, that's what you need to do. That's the main thing. So the Google bot looks for the, yeah, the, the contents Google, of the tag. Yeah, content. the Google bot will first look at this, then it will look at the content of the tags. And then it will cache the content in its memory to see that how it's how it's gonna rank your site and how it's gonna affect your site when people do a search on it. So you gotta duplicate the, the actual content of the tag to, to the attribute named content. No, 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 yeah, like, yeah, you have to do that, you have to write it two times, yeah. This is how Shopify do it. If you're developing yourself, you might not need to do this. You can just use an H1 tag with a CSS class and everything, boom, just write in the content. That, like, write in the title, that's it. This is how Shopify does it. Does not mean that it's wrong it's like they are doing like a really good job so they're like they have their own way of styling all of that stuff but yeah h1 is the main thing which if you have an h yeah sorry sorry it doesn't necessarily have to be content it can be class or id yeah it does no this is don't look at this don't look at the content this is the content sorry i i missed my explanation this is the content the one in the black is the content oh, no. the one in the black is the heading this is just a, like, let's say you, like, you know, when you hover over something like an alt tag or stuff like that, that's just defining what that is. This is not the main thing. This H1 is the main thing and this black title is the main thing because the black, after the black title, the H1 tag ends. That's the main thing. Okay, so you have, uh, okay, so you've got H1. And similarly, like H1, you optimize your H2 if you have H2 because most of the sites have both H1 and H2. And then you can optimize H3, H4, H5, like depending on what you have on your site. But optimizing it include keywords, include like how you set up your title is important. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to point out. Just look at how the title is. I have uh, like, I have my brand name first. Thank you is my brand. And I want the brand to go up. In every single title I am like getting my brand out there. People should know the brand. People don't need to memorize the title. They just need to memorize the brand. That's it. That's how you, that's the number one tip on marketing. When you are marketing, when you are optimizing, people should know what you are. Not what you are offering more, or what you are. 
If they know what you are, if they don't even recognize what you're offering or they don't remember, they'll just look it up on Google, buy a brand name, text you, oh, these guys are offering this, okay, I need this. That's it, simple. So market your brand on every single page. Don't leave it away. Don't just be like, oh, my URL is techfield.ca, that's done. No, not like that. Market your brand on your categories, market your brand on your products, and like everywhere. So, as you will see that I have every like, and I have my brand name on H1 tag. So as soon as Google catches it, it catches my brand on the H1. That's why I have it on the H1 tag. You should know my brand, that's, that's the thing. And then you have like uh, titles, and this is how it's gonna go in the categories page as well. You see, every single one of my computers have my brand name first. So brand name is read first. And how you like how you write your title, it's up to you. Google doesn't care how you write your title. Make sure your title is not more than 70 characters in SEO title and description. I will show you one thing about that. Actually, let me pull up the admin panel of my Shopify store. I will show you. So let's look, let's look at this product. I have the title as long as I want, fine, not a problem. This title is gonna be the one that's appear on your website. And then there's like description and everything. Now check this thing out. This is the main thing, this search engine listing, how Google is gonna preview my site and things to the customer. You see that this thing is different from my title. What a lot of CMS and like uh, CMS do is, and even like sometimes developer make this mistake as well. They just use the title as the Google ti SEO title as well. They don't use, they, your title contains information about your product, but Google needs information what's relevant to it. Like what's relevant to it. So if you check the title, it, it's, it's a completely like, I have my brand name and then I have a pipe sign and then I have like every single like what's this offering right now, correct? But if you check my SEO title, it has com com my brand name at the end, my brand name is at the end on the SEO title and I have utilized the word like high-end gaming PC that's been searched on Google a lot. I have utilized it at first. I want, I have it utilized at first so as soon as Google reads it, be like, oh, okay, you search high end PC, okay, oh, my site will come up and you'll be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna visit their site. Simple, that's how you, but it, it's different. This should not be more than 70 characters. Not be more than 70 characters. I'll tell you the reason why. If you go to the site, it's called moz.com SEO title, and you, if I paste this over here, sorry, you see this, this is this thing is coming up. They, you see these dots, these dots coming up at the end? It means that Google is unable to showcase my complete title to the user. Sometimes it's fine, not a problem. Like when you have something that's high end and then needs more description, it's fine. But if you don't have something that high end and you can describe your product in less than 70 characters, do it, because how it will look like is, if I, let's say if I remove this and I go check, you see those dot dots, like those dots are gone? It means that your type, complete title will appear mm -hmm. on Google. And that's, the, that's a really good impression on customer. That's a really good impression. They can see what is the brand name at the title. So they'll be assured, okay, yeah, it's, it, this is the brand name and stuff like that. So make sure when you're designing your titles, you can check this website, moss.com slash uh, like moz.com and check code, M-O-Z, M-O-Z.com. And then you'll be able to like uh, figure out how your title is gonna appear on the site. This is the main thing, let me tell you. Like this is one of the things that people do, uh, like not a lot of people consider doing, 
what it's worth to it. This helps your ranking. Now we'll dive into the Google Analytics and AdWords right now, and then I'll show you how it helps. Schema internal links, I'm not gonna touch too much on that. It's gonna, it's a whole different domain. So SEO title URL we've already touched and optimizing URL we have already done. So three ways to optimize what I like Mark, to say. Mark, a question. Yep. We got a question. Yep. So how do you put that custom title specifically for SEO if you're not using CMS? Pardon me? If you're not using CMS, yep. how would you, mm, you know, add you, the custom you, CEO title. Okay, okay, okay. You mean how do you put this on your product if you're not using a CMS developing your custom site, right? Yeah. Meta description. These are all meta descriptions. Okay. These are all meta descriptions. And meta descriptions, you are a developer, you know that how meta descriptions work. Okay. Everything is meta description over here. Meta description helps to showcase Google what's going on. If you have meta description, good meta descriptions. So it's met meta with tag title, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm already using it. <laughs> yeah. So this is meta description. So you make sure that you have meta descriptions. All tags are another thing to go for. So that's the other thing. So I'll just uh, summarize this. Three ways to optimize the product is check the product URL. Make sure it uh, has most popular keywords. That helps ranking it. Check the title and make sure it's different from the URL. Yeah, one more thing. Have your URL, title, SEO title different. Why? Because instead of catching just one thing, Google will catch three things in its memory. That's the, like, if you have, if Google is having, Google has three things in its memory, your chances of searches go up. Because it, you, you are having something alternative, and giving the user something alternative to search. So do that. Third thing, check the SEO title and description and this will tell you how Google displays product and make sure how it's optimized. The key point to take from the title and stuff is like a title, make, make sure it's not more than 70 characters. Title and your description, it's not more than 320 characters. It can be more, but if it's more, it's gonna get those dot dot signs. So you won't be able to like, Google won't be able to display your entire title to it. So this is for the description and the 70 is for the, uh, like the main title. <coughs> okay, so I hope you guys understand now a little bit how the SEO works and how you can get the keywords and stuff like that. Because we will really be diving into the Google AdWords and there you will have more idea and you'll be like, for me, it's as, as a business, I'll be performing a live ad right now and running it and see how it's gonna go. And uh, if you are following me on your laptops or stuff like that, make sure that I will tell you where to stop, otherwise you will start getting like built. So I'll, I'll tell you where to stop. Before we proceed, does anybody have any question? Any question before we proceed further? No? Perfect. Sensitive to the time, so you should yep. get, show that show that. Yeah, okay. So that they can set it up, and that that would be a really good. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is Google AdWords. We all know Google AdWords. Google AdWords is a Google platform used to market your product online on Google search engines. It's kind of like whenever you search something like uh, music or stuff like that, you see an ad like ad simple appearing on uh, on any of the product or stuff like that what you're searching. So that's what Google AdWords is. There are two types of Google AdWords. One is Google AdWords Express and one is the normal Google AdWords. We will only be covering the Google AdWords Express because the normal Google AdWords is way beyond the scope of everything. It's, it's a really, really advanced tool. It gives you manual control of every single detail and and to be frank, you need quite a bit of experience to use that. So that's why Google AdWords Express is the best choice to go as it is simple. You can configure and get your marketing presence online easily in just like a couple of minutes. Doesn't take more than that. And uh, Google is itself is a really good, like uh, to have a really good artificial intelligence bot. So according to your business, the, the Google AdWords Express sets the keywords according to itself. You don't need to do any. You don't need to do anything. 
This is best for entrepreneurs who are starting up their businesses, who do not know about, or people who do not know about marketing and stuff like that. They should definitely start with Google AdWords Express, not directly dive into Google AdWords. That's a completely different aspect. So let's just search Google AdWords Express, and you will have this link. Easy online advertisements and stuff like that. So you have Google AdWords Express over there. Just click on it, and it will ask you to sign in. Maybe any anything performed on Google, make sure you have a Gmail address. That's a must. Without a Gmail address, you cannot do any of that stuff. Make sure that you have a Gmail address on if you're performing anything on Google. And similarly, if you're performing anything on Bing, that's Microsoft Search Engine, make sure you have their address. Because you know every company prefers their own stuff, right? <coughs> so in Google AdWords, this is the interface. So on the left, we have campaigns and like all of that. It's pretty simple interface, nothing fancy in here. The main thing to take is create new campaigns. Campaign means ads. Like what type of camp campaigns means the type of marketing which you want to do for your website. So we'll go with create a new campaign. And Google is really powerful. It knows, it asks you what's your main question. What's your main advertisement? You see you have get more calls, get more visits to your physical location, not just e-commerce, it also offers physical location. Third one, get more website sales or signups. That's, that's e-commerce, get more website sales or sign, sign up. this is e-commerce. So you just pick the goal and it's gonna ask you what type of business you wanna advertise. If you have a website, good. If not, then is, can anybody tell me, like uh, when you were having a project proposals and stuff like that, can anybody list the name of a competitor? We will be using it over here. I'm not gonna use a computer or anything which related to my business. I wanna use something that you would like to use. Oh, uh, Citizen Health Information Portal. Okay, that's a really big <laughs> URL. Citizen Health, Health Information, Information Portal. Portal. Okay. That one? one? Yes. It's e health S A S K, right? Yes, it's that one, yes. Okay, so we'll use this. So what you do is you say new business and you type, let's say, health information and business website and then click next. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The demographics, the people which you want to target. So this is what do you want to do? This is something you need to research. You need to know what your business goal is. You need to know whether you're targeting somebody in Manitoba, somebody in Winnipeg, somebody in Canada, somebody in another province, somebody even outside the country like state. Because this determines your budget. This determines your budget. The higher the coverage is, the higher the budget will get. So you have to make sure who you're targeting. So in this one, I would just say like we are targeting uh, pick up a specific, I'm just gonna say I'm targeting the entire Canada. You'll target the entire Canada, so Google will highlight like what your entire Canada is gonna be like and yeah, it also tells you how many people you can, you can get, potential audience. Check this thing out, the potential audience of your business, like Google already knows like how many people are searching this kind of stuff. So it tells you, this is not like all the, this is not the people of Canada. This is what Google knows that how many people are searching right now, uh, all over in Canada. And this is your potential reach, the potential reach. So you click next, and it's gonna ask you what's your business category. Now, according to how, what the, the website is, Google also recommends, like it shows you a hospital. Or you can type in the keywords you use for your research in, in here as well. Or you can also specify what products or services do you want to promote in this ad. You can either go with hospital, it's, it's going to ask you to go with hospital or any other thing. So basically it's a health, so it's a hospital, right? Medical health records. Okay, so you want to uh, like promote medical health records? Yeah. Okay, so we will promote medical health Scheduling. records. Okay, do you 
in general. Okay. Okay. Uh, One more word. Pharmaceutical information. I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, man. I don't know how to spell that. I'm really bad at spelling. So please. Uh, Okay, so we got it actually from their website. And one more thing, it also gives you some suggestions, like children's hospital, women's maternity hospital, emergency hospital. Make sure you take that into account as well. Google might provide you some good suggestions as well. Might be a good thing. So after you've done this, change the category. Check this thing out, potential audience size change. Okay. Your potential audience is not that good. You have to make sure you're doing a keyword which is not like really good oh, to change. Try try health and records. Okay, let's see. Or you got medical Ooh, health records. Try so, okay, e health okay. as well. No, ne never never mind that one. Just because uh, you already got medical health records. So yeah. I, I didn't see that. What about e health? You can do e health because there's a bunch of questions in this question thing. Oh. Well, this is this. Uh, I'm not sorry. I I have to. I forgot. This potential audience depends on your business category. So depends hospital, on which? Oh. on your business category. Oh, okay, yeah. So business category, like there are like around. So two. instead of instead of dealing with, so the business category is hospital. Yeah. Right yeah. Now? So yeah. maybe change that to healthcare. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Health. Yeah, that should broaden your. Well, yeah, it, it increased. It it's increased so a little bit. It's not a lot. Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody cares about health. Because it's okay. the old people that are dying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, because well, the whole point is that by the time we are at that age, we will be the ones, oh, hell, we are about to die. So we should check our health stuff. So maybe that will go up. Okay, we'll go with the healthcare. Because a lot of these people in the healthcare are yeah. old people who don't so, take studies. Like but, what is, but what it's doing now, it, it, so that's interesting because with, with this tool and the capability, it, it, you can see the power of how it changes the dynamics with, without it. Um, you wouldn't know how, you were just guessing as to how big you think it's going to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can still have a good write-up in your paper, like on your, on your proposal, to say, I think this looks attractive, but it's a very narrow, subjective view. What this is doing is giving you the objective facts. And, and the objective facts don't lie. <coughs> so the fact is, is now, you can look at this and go two things. You can either say, I'm either satisfied with the broadening uh, of, of what I'm dealing with, or I'm okay because this is a niche, I'm just gonna continue to focus down this path. This is going to be my niche. It's not in the millions, but you know, that 100,000, 200,000 is where I wanna, uh, I, I wanna focus. I wanna focus. Yeah, right. And when I change the category to healthcare, as the prof suggested, you'll see my suggestions also changed. United Healthcare, health insurance, health insurance companies. Suggestions change every time you change the, your business category. So, so just another thought on this. So you were using mm -hmm. Jimmy, yes. you were using your example. So you've got something that is interesting, but you're still tied into a niche. Yeah. So with this tool, you can, so by going back and forth, you can see where the tool is giving you a perspective of where you're sitting. Yeah. So you might now want to spend a little bit of more time doing a bit more research around, okay, is this really the focus area that I want to brand and target? Or do I want to broaden it? And maybe I want to change my perspective on this. Healthcare obviously isn't doing it for me. It's too narrow. Maybe it's too old a demographic. It's not really doing a lot. I need something spicy or I need something that people do care about. What can I start investigating and looking at that's going to have that broader appeal? Mm -hmm. Fitness. Cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. Add fitness to that thing. Like the keywords or the category? The business category. Okay. How do you add? Add which, Nikki? Fitness. So, oh yeah, as you type in a keyword, Google suggests what's what's there right now on the market. So what did you type in? I just typed, I want to type fitness, and Google suggested me these are the various categories which I use for fitness. Yeah. These are the fitness <coughs> categories which I use for fitness. So, and one more thing, if you can't find it, you can add it, but make sure that your category is findable on Google, it will make it much more easier. Okay. Yeah. So, so even by going with this now, this whole approach. Oh, it went down. 
Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Actually, not yeah. No, it went down. No, you went up. It went up. No, you went up. Hospitals were at two. Oh, close to a million. Yeah. Yeah. unhealthy. <laughs> no, but what it's doing is, is it's changing the perspective now. You had an angle where you were going in under healthcare and yeah. it was very narrow. So lose going, weight. Put lose weight. I want to see how many of them are going to be. Yeah, lose weight. weight. <laughs> okay, this is going to be the last keyword, then we yeah. move forward. Lose diamonds? Oh, damn. <laughs> 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 it's not even a category. <laughs> it's a category. W -E. You were spelling something else. No. O S E W E. Yeah, it's not lose weight. weight no, we weight loss. Yeah. Weight, weight loss. loss. Yeah, yeah, weight loss. loss. No, that's the thing. Yeah, see, oh, weight loss service. Click on yeah. that. No, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. The third one. No, it's not oh. a really big reason. Oh, but, but the, the one that is healthy. But the point being is you gotta play around with it. You gotta, you gotta play around with it. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> make sure that you have like a <laughs> really good understanding. Okay. So moving forward, it's gonna give you some suggested like keywords, what specific products you're targeting. If you specify products, it's gonna like target those products a lot more as compared to the other searches. So make sure that whenever you specify a product, you're specifying something that is that you have researched on your keywords. Because specifying products means you're typing the keywords which users are going to search. So you have to make sure of that. Don't just specify, just not write in your complete title all of a sudden of your service or a product and be like, oh, it's not working, why? You just click on next. Now here's, here's something you wanna write. You need to write your headline. Oh, I see. You need to write your headline too. You need to have a description. And then you can click on next. So here's the thing. Craft up really, really, really good headlines using your research on keywords. Okay, hold on. That's the main thing. Keywords? Oh, yeah, I have to download that. Okay. Yeah, you have to download that. And second thing is your headline should have main keywords which are being searched a lot. If there are less keywords, um, and you're into trouble because your ad won't show up a lot. The more keywords they are, the less budget it will occupy, and the more it will show. Just remember, you're not just paying Google to market your product. You're also paying to get your organic searches up as well because as, as long as the site's being hit every time, your ranking in Google goes up and up every single day. So have to make sure of that. Make sure that you write a really good headline. It cannot be more than 30 characters. Google will not allow it. Both of the headlines. And the description cannot be more than 90 characters. Google will not allow it. Like you can't even type more than 90 characters. It's gonna give you a red line saying that no, it will not work. So I'm just gonna keep this uh, on yeah, this one, like, like on this one, like on this uh, headline. So you can you click on next. It also asks you to add images. Don't do that. It's gonna change the category of the ad a little bit because it's gonna show or display an image with your ad. So don't do that right away because it's gonna cost a lot more to display your images as well. So, and then you just, let me see one thing. Okay, perfect, yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing. Write another ad. Google <coughs> allows you to display five different ads with just one budget. Five different ads with just one budget. And all of them should have different, different descriptions and different, different headlines. So you have a target on, like you can target a lot of things through this. Like I, on once I had need your prescriptions, Canada promises. I can type uh, health ins insurance, like uh, best health, Insurance and then description and like uh, <laughs> Canada's best insurance. So I wow. I, I think that. What is that again? Insurance? Yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not worrying about the spelling. Yeah, I'm really I'm bad at spelling stuff. stuff. But but you, you're, how many can you string together? Five. I'm five. Five. Yeah, but but I'm not sure if it changed or not. I haven't I haven't used yeah, every nice thing is, is how is that appearing? Like you got five strung together. It's going to show them all. No, no just one by one. Like, just... It's not going to show five of them. Oh. Let's say if a user search prescription, it's going to show the prescription ad. But if a user search health insurance, 
and you also provide prescriptions, but you also provide health yeah. insurance, it's, got, it's not gonna show your prescription ad, it's gonna show your health insurance ad. So Google will automatically filter it out for you. Yeah. Google will automatically filter it out according to the person's need. That's a really powerful thing. Because you have only one budget, but you have maximum potential of marketing. Before this, there was only like, you can only run one ad at a one time. That's it. And with just one budget, you run only one ad. Now you can run multiple ads with just one budget at the same time. And then Google will show according to what the person's thirsty. So that's, that's one of the main things. So yep. for the assignment, do you expect us to have to go through a demo like this or? No, 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 no. no the, purpose, the purpose of showing you this is twofold. One is to help drive home the concepts of what I'm doing. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing next week and the week after, which I'll have on the typical material, is I've already got it. I've got a document that I can make available. You can download it. It speaks to uh, the whole Google SEO. It's not a long document, but it'll help drive home the way that the tool helps you set it up. The second thing is that uh, it helps you plan, okay? So you can plan your proposal using a variety of, and, and, and what Amar showed us in addition to this, he showed us a few other tools which, which, is our, which are also helpful. To, to help you set the basis for how you're going to plan your strategy. But what you're really using this for is a tool to, to, to basically set the size of the prize that you're going after. So I'm, I'm, yes, it's important that you set the right ad words and stuff like that in place, but I'm less interested in what that is as more the process yeah. of what you're going through to ultimately get the right taste, the right uh, setup, the right audience so far today, I've given you a lot of material that you can take back in the slide content on what those concepts are. Now you're seeing a tool on how to apply them. And the tool is just that, it's a tool. Yes, okay? tool. So that's why I wanted him to walk through the demo because he's got great experience on using the tool. You don't have to use all aspects of this too. Just quite frankly, of it today, and, and you know, I saw, a few things that he explained which are very, very good, which are helpful in, in, in the early stage, but that just going back and forth on playing around with those uh, words, yeah. the ad words and stuff, and you're trying to figure out what the size of the prize is, and you can see how many audience members you're trying to capture, yeah. that sets the basis for your target market. And you know, within a few minutes, like you start playing around with that, you're starting to sense, where's my sweet spot? Yeah. Yeah. Then I want you to spend time, I'd rather see the rest of your effort is, how are you now going to build the rest of your marketing yeah. strategy and go after your market space on how you're going to attract the people into that area? Because now you know the size of the market. The other thing that this is helpful for is it's giving you costs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, other than trying to guess what your cost template's gonna be yeah. when you put your budget together, yeah, a cost. you're running up a cost right now yeah, right based now. on the you size of what you're going So it gives you a sense of how much your expense is gonna go through. So, uh, as for the budget, so, Google automatically, like, Google normally wants to you to spend more so it can earn more. So you don't have to go with that. So minimum budget, it was $62 a month before. Now it's changed to $70 for entire Canada. Remember, budget changes according to location. Right. If you add US into it, if you're targeting both Canadian and the US market, it's gonna increase. It's not gonna be $70 gonna increase. So just remember that, don't be like, oh, it's $70, I can run ads in the entire world. No, that's not the case. Changes according to location. And if you check the budget, you will see that what you will get per month. Just right on, on, on your right, you will see that you will, your ad will be viewed some, somewhere between like 1,000 to 1,600 impressions. Let's just round the figure up. Yeah. And per month, you are gonna get 36 to 61 clicks. Like, yep. <laughs> impression means people who just view, skim through. It's like the, clicks when you, are actually going yeah, through. Clicks means through. actually clicking on your link and, and going then, to your site. Once again, this is where you see the tool for being presented to you and how it works. You asked a really good question. Well, actually, when, when there's a section I'll be showing you in my lecture slides that speaks to Google and uh, spells out those terms. So number of clicks, impressions, yeah, the whole nine yards, shows you the formula. 
So now you understand, yep. you're gonna understand connecting the two, how they work together. Otherwise, you just get the notes, and if you don't see how it works, you kind of miss out on that. That's and actually, if you adjust that, just, just yep, for a bit, you, just for kicks and giggles, just, yeah, there we go. See, it's the same so you look at the number of impressions that you're getting now when you increase your budget, right? Mm -hmm. But you're paying for it. And so somehow you're going to have to find that sweet spot of the balance. Yeah. You have to figure out the sweet spots of the finance. Like how much are you willing to spend per month? And how much are you willing to get? For me, uh, I'll show you, uh, like if you just click on next, it's going to say review your campaign. And if you click on next, it's going to start running it. So it's just going to give you a little bit of this brief description of what you have. And you have one ad, and this is the second one. It's going to give you the just a brief description. Click on next and you're gonna run, yep. Sorry, is the ad gonna stop when you reach the amount, as the amount of impression or the amount of clicks? Yes, the ad will stop showing. When the maximum clicks, according to your budget, have been reached. So maximum so clicks are 61. Impression. Impressions means people who see your site, they will yeah. not click. I like, mean, when is Google <coughs> gonna stop the ad? When I reach my amount of clicks or impressions? When you reach the amount of clicks, not impressions. Oh, impressions, okay. 1600. Like, Google will not show you ads 300 times in a month if you're only paying it $70. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the demographs right now. I have the live demographs of two of my ads, which I ran on AdWords uh, Express. Now I changed to Google AdWords. That's a different story. We won't be going into that. That's a little really different story. So you click on next, ads going to start running. I'm not going to click on next because it's not uh, like it help is not my business model. So it's going to start running just nothing. So um, let's just go towards my campaign. Yeah, see, I had this pause and I had these two ads pause, right? The reason is I do not use AdWords anymore because I've been into the market for more than a year now, so I know how things are gonna work. So I'm using Google AdWords. That's a really professional tool. I'll show you, I'll just show you the interface, but I'm not gonna dive into it. So when you have your campaign run and you click on detail, See what happens. This is the main thing which you need, which you need to see. This is how, see this. Google will automatically show you what your impressions are, what your clicks are, and what the amount you spent. Right now it's zero because I already stopped it, haven't been running it for like a couple of months now, but it shows how it's gonna be and how it's gonna target everything. Okay, let me just change the, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something uh, all the time. Ah, see? It's time when I ran the ad, AdWords Express. So, these are the impressions. Oh, sorry. I thought you have a question. No, no. Yeah. Oh. So these are the impressions. These are the clicks. This is the amount I spent just on Google AdWords Express, and uh, you can see how it, how it is. And to be honest, seven thousand three hundred and nine clicks. Seven thousand. Yes, yeah, seven thousand three hundred and nine oh. clicks. These are seven thousand three hundred and nine clicks, and more than. 600,000 600, impressions for just only $792 for more than a year. Not a big deal. Like, it's nothing, I would say. Like, it's a lot, actually. Oh, it's not the money really is nothing uh, compared to how, what, what I'm getting. That's because I started doing search engine optimization. I started my site getting ranked up naturally a lot more as compared to Google AdWords as well. So that's how you do it. But yeah, just have to make sure that keep the amount and check that how much you can spend and uh, judging by if you multiply like seventy dollars by i think 14 or by 60 you'll be able to get around like 792 or something like that closer to that so i ran adwords actually for more than a year like three three four months more and here, here is the thing like it it tells you the adwords express also tells you the keywords people are searching so you have one more way to find out what type of keywords people are searching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, I uh, thank you for that. But, yeah, but, look at, but, but look at the audience that you're going after too. Right? Yeah. So I mean, you right? have like uh, devices. He's, already, he's, he's targeting an audience that's already you know active with your local targeted ads. Yep. Yeah. So. Smartphones are the main thing people are searching nowadays, and then you have 
uh, your ad settings. It, uh, it's not going to show a lot of things. So if I go to manage all, I will be able to see how many how many keywords were used and how they were ranked and what I got and every single thing. So this is also a great way to learn about your keywords. Just by running ads on Google for a month or two, just to test out your marketing potential, what you can do with the market, you can get all of this information just in a month. And like $70 to get all of the, this information, literally nothing. In my opinion, literally nothing. Because you can make more than that with just one service or one product you sell. So it's literally nothing. So this is how Google AdWords work. And, oh sorry, AdWords Express works. And just to show you a brief thing about like how Google AdWords, what Google AdWords is, since we've been talking about a lot of the Google AdWords stuff. So I'm just gonna go to Google AdWords. Oh sorry, um, Google, I had the, hold on, let's find it here. So I need to sign in. Not spot user. So this is AdWords, my friend. This is a complete different story than AdWords Express. This is a complete different, this is a professional marketing tool. This is something that's completely different from AdWords. AdWords Express was like five, six clicks, created ad, done. In this, you set everything manually. Every single thing manually. Every single thing. Every single thing. And you can see the cost and everything. So I spent like more than a thousand bucks already on my ads and like in from the day I started, I started on, I started my business online e-commerce on 3rd August 2017 and today is 28th Fab. So you can see like one around like uh, more than a thousand and then the impressions and the clicks nine, are almost 9,000 clicks, almost 9,000 clicks for just thousand bucks. And Google was showing that you're only gonna get like 30 to 50 clicks uh, for $70. So you can see that if you optimize your site with SEO and stuff like that, what more you can accomplish. Right. And it's gonna show you the keywords and everything, what people search. And it's also, this is the demograph, age demograph you were talking about in the slides. Yeah. Shows you the gender and the age. A lot of my populations are like males, not females, because like computers and technology, a lot of males are interested. So that's that. And it shows my devices, including the cost. Like if I just hover over it, it shows that I spent $361 for computers and I spent $135 for tablets, but I spent $562 just for a cell phone. A lot of people are on cell phones searching all of this. So it shows you everything. That's the cost. And then you have impressions, then you have clicks. Day and hour. Yeah, day and hour actually. Like it shows you which hour was the best and your ad day. ran. Which hour was the best your ad ran. A lot of things, like if I were to take a class just on Google ad work, it's gonna take me five, six weeks just to get you to use all of this stuff. So it's just a lot of class. And yeah, one more thing. Uh, if you're not even running ads on Google AdWords, Google AdWords, there's a tab for keywords. What you can do is, you can, to get the keywords, just select a campaign, just like create a normal campaign, select it. You see this, enter related website. Enter related website. Now I'll show you the, you, you said was health, what was it? Health? Health information. Information? Oh, talking about the actual thing that I yeah. searched? Citizen oh, health. Citizen Health Information Program. I mean, portal. Oh, I understand. This is a site, right? E health yes. SAS, right? Yeah. So, just copy it. Let's see what you do. Google is going to show you what these sites are using as their main keywords in searches and optimization. Is that what ERA? Say? What is yeah. that first one? EMR. EMR. Oh, EMR. What's yeah. EMR? Emergency medical record. Oh, okay, so you can need that. Anyway, or, <laughs> sorry, sorry, electronic medical record. My oh, apologies. Okay, EMR. EMR. <laughs> you can see Google already showed you what these sites are using. They are your competitors, what they are using. It's showing you what they are using. You can utilize these keywords in search engine optimization and your Google Ads. 
Yeah. Just type in the name of the site. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. If you don't want to do a lot of market research, just type in the name of the site. And it's not going to show you just one. It's going to show you all of them that are being used. And it's all going to show you the monthly searches of these keywords. How many people are searching it by a month? I think EMR has like around 4.4K, like 4400 k 4400 uh, per month. So this is how it happens. So you get, <coughs> this is pretty interesting. Like you have a lot of power with tools. You can so, manage your business. So just for the benefit of the students, if they, uh, the AdWords Express was pretty cool and it's pretty straightforward and easy yeah. to get to, to yep. understand that. There's still some dynamics there that need to be used for planning. If they, they could, go into the AdWords, yep. and if there's one takeaway from here, is the keyword, is the keywords yep. with the competitor yep. prices there, which yep. can also help you yep. identify areas that you might want to target with your marketing. Because it's giving you what your competitors are doing. That's the thing. And for a lot of you, I saw with your proposals, where you guys are offering services that are kind of there already, like they're already established presence. So now you're you're all focused on how you're gonna create niches, how you're gonna differentiate yourself. Yep. So this knowing what your competitors are doing is gonna give you fuel for thought of how you might not be thinking about how you're gonna change or, or, or set yourself up into that space. What you're up against. Right? So so it builds on your SWOT analysis that you did earlier it's giving you more meaningful information uh, yeah. figure out. Well, what if I wanted to do LTO to my competitors? What am I supposed to do? Like, increase my... You have to increase your bid, your, your bid, your CPC bid, cost per click, mm -hmm. cost per click. So you basically Google have to pay ads. For it. No, uh, the thing is, when you're starting a business, there are already giants who are spending thousands of dollars on average. You cannot outsmart them like right away as soon as you launch it. It's gonna take some time. Like when I started, I didn't get one single order for four months. One single order for four months. And now, just don't ask. <laughs> it's pretty hectic. So outsmarting means that you provide better service at a better price and a better product at a better price. That's how you outsmart your like competitor. If there's a if there's you have a customer that comes in and says to you, "Hey, you're offering this product for twenty four hundred dollar." That same product, let's say, is offered on Best Buy for twenty six hundred dollar. A customer is gonna go to Best Buy because that's a known brand and you're in a brand new brand. What you have to do is you have to explain to that customer why our product is better than Best Buy's. We spend time with you. We spend like uh, your like we answer your questions. We answer your support. You probably support all that. Like what you can do to make your product better. My question is yep. more into let's say for example Uber and Sleepy Dishes. Yep. If they want a better dinner ranking on Google, yep. You could just have to pay more. You have to pay more. Okay. You want a better ranking? You pay more. <laughs> yeah, but it's also it, it's paying more. But what you're doing is you're trying to get, you're, fi you're fine tuning, when he goes into the AdWords, he's fine, what he found is that through experience, right, that it had to be running for a while, because every site is gonna be unique. And you're trying to fine tune how you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah. In the early stages, the Google Express helps set you up. And there's no magic formula other than giving you the best starting block to get out there and get your presence known. <coughs> As you start collecting that data, then you're gonna start working on fine tuning. You're never, you're never gonna hit the magic bullet right off the get go on what's gonna optimize. Because people in a lot of cases don't even know your service. So it's almost impossible, right? Until you start seeing the activity coming in. Then you start looking at how, and you, you heard his story, which I thought was interesting. In the early stages, he, he wasn't doing too bad with what, what he was paying, but now he's actually even maximized his bang for the buck even further. He's paying more but the hit rate has gone through the roof. So the ratio between what he's getting back and what he's paying has just been completely yep. optimized. So he's really fine tuned it. You'll never get there right off the get go, but as a strategy, that's where you wanna be, right? The, and the things you're gonna look at are cost per click 
and the, and those types of parameters that you're going to yeah. adjust. And, uh, and but that's like it. that's main when you go to main Google AdWords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, but the so point is, is that not it's not about so mastering how to get yeah. there with this. It's just knowing the things that you're going to look for as you work yeah. towards that goal. So we'll end this class. It's already nine, but I just wanted to mention. Next yeah, so, so just to wrap up for tonight, because first of all... I'm just, just going to take five minutes yeah. to show uh, one more tool that's called the Google Analytics. It helps you like <coughs> to see what, how, what's your, like, uh, it helps you to see how your site is performing actually, basically on the internet. So if you see Google Analytics, you have users, you have uh, sessions, you have bounce rate and session duration. The thing you have to, the key take away from this is the bounce rate. Make sure it's not more than 70%. Meaning that bounce rate means a user comes onto your site, leaves right away, within a second or two. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't stay. That's bad. That's really, really bad. Like sometimes it is good if, you're, if your service or a product is something for particular, but even for that, you don't want it to be like more than 70%. After optimizing all of this stuff, you can see my bounce rate being reduced. reduced. It means that I'm performing better than before. I'm so, performing way so, better than so, before. So that in itself is a good segue yeah. to, uh, on the second assignment, you'll see that there's a series of questions that's giving you yeah. a variety of different conditions that are going on. And, oh, the, yeah, question, one, and the question you have yeah. to ask yourself is, what do you have to do to optimize it? And one more thing, an uh, right? yep. we were talking about yeah. uh, Facebook and Instagram marketing. That's gonna be on the next class. We'll be doing a demo on that as well. Google Analytics is telling me my Facebook ads are running, earning me more like views on my site and everything than Google AdWords, and I'm paying Google $100 a month and I'm paying $60 only for Facebook. Thank you. That we will see when we will go towards the Facebook and Instagram and how you can so, optimize that. Okay, so yeah. I know Let's that people want to get going here, but first of all, AdWords. Amar, I want to thank you for, yes. for part one. Thank you. Great job. Very valuable, this is great. So, so a couple things between now and next week. Um, uh, which, uh, one, I'm going to uh, uh, highlight the um, content aspects associated with what we saw tonight. Um, I'm gonna add a couple of documents for you to download that you can start reviewing ahead of time.